morning guys welcome back to the channel in today's video we are going over a very highly requested subject a five month review of being mobile as a smart repairer is it worth it did i make the right decision and what do i think of it so my faults five months later of being mobile leaving the comfortable warm workshop and going out on the road uh, are you have to be very open-minded and if you are brand new to the world of smart repairs and you are going to buy a franchise do some training and go out on the road 100% brilliant thing to do if you are uh, from a body shop background and you're looking to go mobile and you've never done it before my advice would be go and see if you can go out with someone and see if you can get on with it uh, it's still a brilliant job to do now I will more than happily eat humble pie and let me tell you, everybody has different opinions of smart repairs and smart repairers when you're from a body shop background. And it's a whole new world out here. And I am not too proud to say that. Doing things in a controlled environment, uh, doing jobs that you know that you've done day in, day out, how your gun will perform under these settings, uh, and all these set criteria when you're mobile it all goes out the window you've got a whole lot of learning to do it's a whole different world i'm not going to lie to you when i first started in my head was just like mush it just blown away by trying to learn how to paint or lacquer something in 40 mile an hour wind <laughs> it is not easy and I don't care what anyone says in the comments from their body shop, if you've not been out on the road and done it, you need to go and try it for yourself because it will change your mindset and your opinion on how things are achieved outside. Uh, I'm not too proud to eat humble pie and my hat goes off to every smart repairer out there because transitioning over from body shop life to mobile life it's a whole new world and don't get me wrong it has its ups and downs uh, weather being the main factor um, very very difficult weather conditions whether it's scorching hot uh, one of my vi recent videos I never realized how hot the panel temperature was and my lacquer bubbled up and burst on me uh, my mistake I should have checked first before putting a lamp on it um, but it's one of them things you know I am fresh as it comes to this industry I am a newbie um, yes I've got painting experience but smart repair experience no not mobile so there are little hiccups along the way um, also a lot of people have asked how's my van held up my build that I've done how's it sort of faring uh, we'll go over that in a minute as well uh, things that I may have done differently and may change in the future or might keep the same um, But in general as for going mobile look listen If you are a worker and you work in a body shop or you're an owner and you own a body shop Going from owning and running a business and it doesn't have to be related to doing painting cars if you are a business owner You will all know that it's hard work is 24 7 uh, oh, ambulance. It's 24 7, you never stop. You hardly get time out with your family. Um, you hardly ever get a break. Now, it is not easy running any business. This is a totally different business to what I was running prior. Uh, I never had a day off. In the body shop, I was seven days a week trying to make the money, pay the bills. Being a smart repairer, I only do five days a week. I do Monday to Friday. Ah, oh, the car crash here. Typical. Looks like they're gonna close this bit of road. 
Oh, do you want to turn the camera around or? It's not happening. Oh no, it's just, just happened. Bear with people. Don't think I should be showing this, but someone's just had a crash and done a runner and the police have turned up. I think it might have been a police chase actually. Because they were here a bit lively. It's just happened in front of us. Turn around. Bit no way. Bear with. Wow, it's all kicking off in this video. <laughs> I think I just spoke to the lady there. She actually see the crash. I didn't. Now I come around this bend and the lady stopped. And that car's just crashed into the ditch, but the police are there within seconds, so we actually think they've run across the field. <laughs> We think that uh, no, it was a police chase. Welcome to Essex, everyone. Well, actually, this is Hertfordshire. Uh, yeah, anyway, back to the video. It's all kicking off. Now I've got to drive miles the other way. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can't get through. Um, where was I? My brain's got the mush. Ah, yes. Five days a week. I don't want to work like a dog anymore. No offence to anyone that has to work like a dog, but I've done it for years. Um, so now it's really, really nice to do five days a week. Everybody needs to earn different amounts of money. I totally appreciate that. Um, and you can earn very reasonable money doing this trade. And in fact, I'll tell you, I earn, I'm earning more now than I did when I owned a body shop. Um, sure, uh, it's just purely to do with the outlay. I don't have to pay out as much money and I've got a lot less overheads and it works out a hell of a lot better for me. So doing five days a week now is possible and I really, really like it. So if you are thinking about becoming a smart repairer, um, yeah, 100%, you get a lot more freedom. Today I'm not working. Uh, I'm actually trying to make my way over to see Gavin Pink at the paint shop. Um, popping over for a cup of tea, he rang me up and said, pop over, I've got time for you. I don't know what it is, <laughs> I'm popping over there. I just had a haircut finally. Um, today's weather was horrendous from three o'clock this morning. We've had thunder and lightning storms all day. And uh, the job that I had booked in for today, I believe he's a subscriber as well, uh, scheduled to do the lower half of his Mercedes. And with rain on the ground and then water and trying to paint the lower part of his car I'm going to no doubt blow water about and yeah it's probably not the best choice and I said look I'll come it's no problem but if you don't need it done today we'll reschedule and try and do it on a better day so we can get the job to come out as best it can the job's been done before and failed and the lacquer's peeled off and stuff so obviously I want my job to be as good as it can be so it's not going to fail so, um, freedom, it's lovely. If you don't want to work, don't book a job in for that day. Uh, if you can, you know, book in two or three jobs and it pays your bills, then book in two or three jobs, whatever you're happy with. Now, I only do roughly, so roughly, I'm trying to only do one job a day at the moment. Some days I book a couple of little jobs in, some, and some days it's one big job, some, some days I actually do do two corners for argument's sake, two different jobs. Um, but at the moment I am five months in, I'm still finding my feet, um, and this leads me on to the next subject of readjusting to smart repair life. Now, coming from a body shop background, I am trying to readjust to what is the norm for a smart repairer. They don't all mask the cars off properly. They just put a bit of brown paper up and hammer it. Now, I don't feel comfortable doing jobs like that because of the overspray and stuff. But then you are in situations where there's cars around you and you have to do your job. And then now, People have commented, people, you know, and I get these comments quite often. Sometimes there's cars about and you've just got to do it and there's overspray going to go everywhere. It doesn't go 
as far as everyone thinks it really honestly does waft about and then kind of spiral up and go up in the sky but there will be times and there has been times where there's vehicles about there's nothing you can do i don't feel comfortable about it but i'm also not going to do my job and not feed my family because there's cars around um, some people that have done smart repairs for years don't give a monkeys I don't and I watch people on YouTube I see people in the street I, you know some people don't give a monkeys whereas I'm finding it really hard to adjust um, but I'm getting there now I still do bag up the whole motor or at least three quarters of the motor where I can do some people don't bag up at all and what I mean by that, if you're not familiar with that, is they just the plastic poly sheeting. Some people just use a bit of brown paper and they just crack on. Fair play, uh, and it makes their job a lot faster. And yeah, if you're happy with doing that, then you do that. I'm not telling anyone how to do their jobs. I'm just not comfortable doing that myself. Um, it's a lot of readjustment, but then this, I can't say anything because. There's people that have gone and bought a franchise and have been taught that way. That's all they know. They was never smart repairers before or painters. They went and bought a franchise, had training, that's what they've been told to do, so that's what they do. So I can't knock anybody for their processes at all. For me, five months on, I'm still finding it a little difficult to readjust, but I'm learning to, and I'm getting there, and I'm making a living and pay my bills and that's the main thing everyone can do anything however they want to do it um, obviously I film what I do I'm, I do YouTube it's just life it's just one of them things would I do anything different if it were on camera no I still don't I still do the same thing uh, I just film what I do and that's what you guys see my YouTube channel, as you all know, has never been about being, oh, I'm a YouTuber. No, I'm not. I'm just me. I'm just a bloke that paints stuff. Used to have old cars. Will we have old cars in the future? Uh, and yeah, that's all I do. I just film what I do. Um, so nothing changes for me. What you see on camera is what I still do off camera. So that side of it won't change. Um, do I regret? Going mobile, no I don't, it's the best thing I've done and I should have done it a long time ago. Um, it's a lot less headache and stress for me as regards to running this business and um, it's very tricky not seeing the cars when I quote the jobs. I quote from pictures and videos because you turn up, I've done a Porsche the other day, I think I've done a, yeah, I've done a video on the Porsche. I've turned up to do one lot of damage and in my blend area there was more damage and the guy went oh I'll just pull that polish out no mate it won't polish out it's a whole new repair I've got to paint that as well so that side of it's tricky but you turn the rough with a smooth you turn up at some jobs and the damage is just paint transfer and I managed to polish it all out so you didn't even have to paint so there's ups and downs as within the body shop as well and in any job so that side of it it, it's just one of them things but yeah 100% if you are thinking about being a mobile smart repairer I can't recommend it highly enough um, I think it's excellent and the freedom that I get I really enjoy and it's just I don't know like realistically if the job was local enough and I just booked in a bumper corner I go and do the bumper corner three hours and I'm back at home. I've never had so much time at home. It's brilliant. So that side of it is really, really good. But then that all comes back to the money side of things, how much money you need and how much money you can charge in your areas. Uh, and obviously everyone's got to pay their bills. So you choose the amount of jobs you need to do or price accordingly. It's one of them. I'm not the cheapest out there and I'm not the dearest. I've noticed that people more up north than me, uh, they don't get as much money as I can, like get down here. Um, but then there's also people down here that are a hell of a lot dearer than me. So I'm kind of in the middle. Um, my standard charge, well I must tell you, I'm not nothing to hide. 
our standard charge for a bumper corner is 200 quid in my areas and that's quite normal but there's there's guys out there charging 250 and 300 quid and up north some people only get 150 quid for a bumper corner so you know it all varies in your area um you can't do a couple of bumper corners a day it's a very nice wage you know um who wouldn't want that it's one of them so you've also got other factors people don't get back to you people don't confirm their jobs people mess you about it's life it's any business it's not just our business that's kind of what happens um but nine nine out of ten customers is, once they're booked they're booked uh, it's fine uh, it's never really an issue uh, so that side of it's fine it's just how it goes um and it's actually nice going out in the morning and going to different places all the time that's different very different if you work in a factory you just get bored of the same thing all the time going out on the road being mobile going to different places it's actually good it really breaks up your working week um, and you get flexibility like today I'm, I'm, I've gone and had a haircut shave I'm popping over to see my mate uh, I'm gonna have a cup of tea no doubt have a chin wag for a bit and then I go home um, nice day you know I ain't earn no money, but it's no problem. Yeah. When you work for yourself, you have to budget for these things. Put a bit of money away, you know. But yeah, it's nice. I could go work tomorrow if I want, but I haven't booked nothing in for tomorrow. It's bank holiday weekend, and I want Friday off, and I want the Monday off. So that's what I'm doing. Couldn't do that before when I had to pay out thousands for a body shop. So another, another plus point, you know. Um, so yeah, I hope that's answered a lot of your questions. When I stop, we'll go over the van side of things, show you what I'm happy with, what I'm unhappy with, what I change, what I wouldn't change. But my general overview, five months in, is I love it and I'd highly recommend it to anyone that wants to do it. I've had a gazillion questions on this and I thought I'd make a quick video just so it's easier for everybody. Um, yeah we'll go over the van stuff in a minute when we stop i'll give you a little walk around uh show you how things are faring how things are holding up um would i change anything and what would i change if i did and we'll go from there see you tomorrow right guys popped over to see gavin i've had a cup of tea and he's uh showed me something that he's made which is really cool and we, uh, I thought I'd a little walk around and show you what vehicles he's working on at the minute. But uh, Pinky's blocks no longer just make blocks. Excuse the flickering in here. Uh, Gav, where's your pile? Over there. Oh, I'll yeah, show them. Yes. Got now got some cool kneeling pads. Check them buttes out. I'll try and step back so you can see. You know the old workshop kneading pads? Well, I use this all the time. You always see me sitting on my ass. Um, obviously, you've got the OG colour pattern there. Pinky blocks. And then they've got the black version. I actually like the black version. I like both, to be fair. This video wasn't an advert. It's just randomly happened today. <laughs> and then we've got the little ones, which are also cool. Check them buttes out. And uh, Gav's been ever so kind and gave me some to try out. He's also given me a spare set. So what we're actually gonna do is work out some kind of competition and I'm gonna give a set away because uh, I feel like it. <laughs> so I'll get back to you on that of how you can enter and how you can win a set of them. But that is a very generous um, gift and I'm very happy for it. We'll work out uh, how to do that soon and I'll get back to you. Let's show you some cool cars while I'm here. Let's show you the first little treat. Not that Gav's mixing room's not. <laughs> cool mixing room. I step into the booth. It's got a beautiful E type jag that's um, in the middle of having its ceramic coating applied. This thing has uh, had a full bare metal repaint by hand 
all stripped down by hand to bare metal and redone. I think all the bonnet's been apart. It's had the full novel for classic car system used on this from the epoxy upwards, the whole lot. And uh, looking beautiful. And you're in the process of ceramic in at the moment, aren't yes, you? Yes, I'm just cleaning it all Getting off. it ready. Getting it ready. Yeah. I uh, believe this is a, this is having a Cartex ceramic, yes. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, this is having a Cartex ceramic. I'm not going to lift anything. Everything's been done in there under the hood, a whole lot, as you could imagine. Very, very nice. Uh, this, he, Gav said to me that they've used the waterborne base coat for this one. Beautiful colour. I did ask him if this is an original colour, and it actually is an original colour. Very, very nice. And a very sensible option to have it ceramic coated after all this work's gone into it. And as you can see, he's just preparing it now for the... Sorry, I forgot your name. Dave. Dave. Dave's preparing it now to receive the ceramic coating. But what a lovely, lovely whole thing that is. Beautiful. Whoever owns this is going to be very, very happy. And there's me just randomly walking past. That looks like a lovely Cortina on the side. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> looks like it's got uh, an extensive cage in there. Lots of work happening to this one. I'm guessing this is not going to be a standard Cortina when it's finished. Lovely. Right, I'm going to get out of Dave's way. Let him crack on doing his job. Let's go look at some more goodies. See you in a sec. There we go guys, don't see one of them every day. An old Triumph TR4A. This has been bare metalled uh, and this is currently in um, the epoxy primer stage where they'll be starting to do their bodywork over the epoxy. They don't normally have two bonnets, as Gav just said to me, there's lint on there for a reason. I think all the panels are just clipped back on for the moment. Uh, and they bare metal this by hand as well. So there's plenty of work involved in getting it to this point. Uh, and then the bodywork gets, if you don't already know, you epoxy the bare metal, then you do your bodywork on top, all your filler work, straightening, and then it goes through various primer stages before you get to the painting stage. It's a lovely old thing. It's good to see people still keeping vehicles like this on the road as well. This one's gonna come out nice. I can imagine there's been many hours gone into this already. Yeah, a bit more work been happening down that side as you can see. So the process is well underway. There's an old Dagnum dustbin under that sheet there. We'll show you that next. All right, on to one of Ford's iconic cars, Escort Cosworth. This was actually one of my customers. Uh, I passed him on to Gavin. He's had some vandal damage down the side uh, and they're sorting it out. The bonnet's been back to bare metal. There's a few bubbles and scabby bits and a few little bubbles on the arches. Both arches have been repaired, as was the front bumper, completely stripped back to bare plastic and redone. Uh, some door straightening been happening. Make it all nice and mint again. A very rare one in the flat red. Uh, I'm not going to guess at what colour, but I'm thinking sort of radiant red. Uh, I can't actually remember. I will actually, should I cheat? Yeah, I'll cheat. <laughs> radiant pink. I just confirmed with the governor. Yeah, I did get it right. It is radiant red. There's not a lot of cozies in this colour, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, they're going to paint it, do the door aperture, uh, paint the side with the door off, and then obviously do the door. Arches were all made good, front bumper was made good, bonnet been bare metalled, so that'll be back to looking straight and looking lovely. And the same with this arch. That's well underway. And then we've got a Volkswagen Beetle over there, I mean a Porsche over here. Uh, it looks like Gaz painted the side, I'm just guessing on this one. Uh, they're just polishing it up because I believe they're going to ceramic cut. 
Am I right? You're ceramic coat in the pool, shouldn't you? Yes, mate. Yeah, yeah. 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 So both sides of it in the back bumper. Both sides in the back bumper has been painted, and they're going to be ceramic coating um, the whole car. So it's just going through its sort of polishing stages. Um, Gavin actually uses a new ceramic coating from Cartec because I questioned him on this because normal ceramic coatings you can't put over fresh paint for six weeks but this new one from Cartec uh, apparently within 48 hours or so you can coat with this coating so pretty cool good to know uh, innovations happening with new products because it is good to ceramic coat your vehicles if you're doing all this sort of body work to it and making it look mint again it's nice to protect it all very nice car if you're into them uh, it, not my cup of tea but it's still a nice vehicle that's what's caught my eye beautiful mark one escort that looks like it's going to be rejuvenated very soon some extensive works going on here I believe there are lots of new stuff getting welded in here. Front panel, uh, firewall by the look of it. Chassis rails are original and good. It's having a new floor. I'm guessing that's the brand new floor there that they're working on. Uh, seals are going to be replaced by the look of that. It's all braced up. There'll be some rear quarter repairs by the look of it and the front end is not attached so i'm guessing that's getting replaced and all made good a lot of work's gone into this already by the look of it and still will be a lot more work to go all braced up there so everything stays where it should on a custom made jig gav made that himself yeah gonna be lovely when it leaves here no doubt plenty of work involved very nice it's nice to see some old vehicles getting some love on the channel again <laughs> even though they're not mine right i'll see you in a moment doors back doors new bonnet, bonnet new front balance everything going on it yep. whole lot Re complete rebuild that bolt gav's just showing me an old bedford cf it's having a nut and bolt restoration <laughs> they've been collecting donor parts which are inside the vehicle found all good panels new back doors rear valance things like that it's all different cuts as you can see in there full restoration for a company it's got wings front valance bonnet that's going to be pretty cool not something you see every day I certainly didn't expect someone to be uh, doing an old Bedford CF. But they have actually had it running. Pretty cool. It's going to look good when that's done. Uh, yeah, some firm wants this done for whatever reason. Uh, it probably won't get used, it'll be in the showroom. But nice, iconic, old school bus. Can't wait to see that one done. <laughs> right i'll catch up with you guys in a mo and we'll um go around the van oh, i might go around the van quick now hold on let's give you a quick walk around of the van let you know how i've been getting on with it um <laughs> we'll start with the body kit <laughs> i've reversed my bumper into a post outside my own house and the lower valance come off that to whack a load of no more nails in that and some wood screws to hold it on and glue that back um, so far I've curbed two wheels these ones are mint still the front balance had uh, an area where you could get plenty of glue in and that survived and been good this skirt oh no the other skirt has fallen off or half fallen off I had to re-glue it um, I can't remember if I caught this front wheel. No, I didn't actually. I've only caught this back wheel twice, two different occasions. So I've murdered me wheel. That was on a width restriction. 
which was a nightmare. Let's get the van opened up and I'll show you what I would like to change and what I won't change. Right, seeing as we are actually here at <laughs> Pinky Sprocks HQ, give him a little plug. If you've not seen Gavin's social media, I'll leave links in the description. Love using these blocks. My little van set up. So I run an ABAC 25 dryer and I run the ABAC uh, 90 litre compressor. I've got a full mains hookup system in here with two double sockets. Uh, running a 16 amp setup, I run that through to the customer's house uh, and power the whole van. Got my Hex 45 Rock Awnings gazebo in there, slides underneath. My awning sides are down there. My little trolley chair lives in the back there. Infrared lamps. Uh, what I have done is I bought some little crates. These are little fold down crates. In this one, I have my fillers, my spreaders, all my filling equipment, some aerosol primers and stuff like that in that crate. The crate in front is my lacquer, thinners, panel wipes and fade out thinners and gun cleaning stuff. And this little crate is all my sandpaper boxes, guide coats and stuff like that. And then that little crate over there is full of foams and soft edge materials and stuff like that. Uh, that will all stay, all the racking will stay. Um, at the back of my racking is where I have a heat gun, hair dryer, my poly mask, my brown paper. It needs to get pushed back in. Everything sort of has a home. And this is all of my spotter attachments, which are all strapped to the back of the van there as well. And then down there, as you can see. Let's get around to the side door. Go. So I've still got my setup. Uh, tools and stuff, this is all my equipment I use all the time, sandpapers, polishing stuff, temperature, thermometer, all things like that, scales, sanders, they'll all stay the same, electric hookup going into a 16 amp socket, uh, up the top there is where my old worn out kneeling pad used to be and I've now got a shiny new pinkies blocks kneeling pad which is gonna be great my polishers always live there that could stay there my guns all live up there and up the top there in this wooden thing that's screwed down is my um, mixing sticks thinners uh, my vape juice in the big bottle, <laughs> water-based thinners, and a little old uh, cleaning pot. I clean my guns out into that, and then go and empty it into a big drum in the workshop. Bear with. And, yeah, that's it. Charger for my vape, my gloves, polishing system, loads of magnets, got a torch up here. Loads of people ask about this sun color torch that i use can't actually remember who makes that but it's been brilliant that magnets on the roof got another one up there uh i've got my three stage air filtration system there a and i one been brilliant five months in never had an issue and all of my charges on the back wall there for all of my equipment that i use and then underneath i have my um polisher, my flex polisher, my infrared lamp, my paint scheme, toolbox and my stack gun. That's annoying getting things in and out of there but I haven't really got anywhere else for them to live so that probably will stay. My hoover extraction system is annoying, it rattles back and forth but I'm going to make some kind of metal bracket that I can hook there so that can't slide out um, and work sewing out along them lines with that but after five months of using the van, how it is, I don't think I would change anything. Um, probably looking at getting a brand new van next year, uh, and I'll probably will have the exact same build. Um, I can't really find ways of improving what I've got. Up the top, I've got my plastic welding system, some PDR stuff, some other miscellaneous items on the top shelf, and my kneeling pad lives up there. Other than making sure the hoover can't roll out 
Uh, I'm gonna get a new extension lead because that's annoying me and I keep meaning to get a 10 meter one you have to unroll it all of the way when you're using it. Uh, my spotter's under there, you can't hardly see it. And then I've got my texture bumper system now. Um, but yeah, the rest of it and the way that it's been built and the way that I use it, it just works. I don't think that I would change much. And when I do get a new van, I'll build it the same and put all this stuff back in it. So I think it's worked out well. Um, I don't think there's much, there's just niggly bits, you know, but actual day-to-day -day usage is fine and you just carry on exactly as I, as I am, really. I'm going to um, speak to you guys in a moment. I'm going to pop back in now. Uh, so I'm out here being rude, finishing the video. But yeah, I'll speak to you in a moment. Here we go, guys. I'm on my way home now. That was super kind of Gavin to... Um, give us a set of mats to do a giveaway with um, well he didn't actually ask me to do a giveaway with them he gave me two sets of the mats and I said you know what I'll do a giveaway uh, I can only use one set so uh, massive thanks to Gavin Pink over at the paint shop and Pinky's Blocks if you don't already know Gavin's the manufacturer of Pinky's Blocks the sanding blocks that I use um, top bloke really nice guy and does some pucker cars um, if you've not seen his social media or his YouTube channel I'll leave the links in the description go and have a little look uh, if you want to win the set of mats that I'm going to do a giveaway on I would say leave a comment in this video give the video a thumbs up share it about on your social media if you can it always helps the channel grow and you have to head over to Gavin's channel and give him a thumbs up and um, follow him on his social media. You can put anything you want in the comments. If you comment on this video and you've done that, then you'll be entered into the draw. And next weekend, I'll, uh, I'll do the giveaway and one of you guys get to win a set of these new kneeling pads. You can use them in your garage at home, if you're a mechanic, you can use them. There's loads of applications. If you're a painter, they're well handy to have. So, yeah, what a nice thing of him to do. He just randomly rung me today. And I pop over, I've got a present for you. <laughs> so, I know the video's dragged on. Um, and uh, I'm sorry it's so long. I've had so many people asking me all of these questions so I thought I'd wrap it up into a video so you guys know five months in what are my thoughts of going mobile and do I regret it no I don't if you guys are thinking about going mobile and being a smart repairer I highly recommend it uh, really really enjoying it it's very challenging don't be too proud to eat a bit of humble pie uh, it's a whole new world learning how to do things out in the elements um, but it's brilliant and it's worth it so that's my conclusion my van I'm pretty damn happy with my build I don't think I'm going to change much there'll be a few little niggles along the way but that's about it um, but yeah other than that I just wanted to summarize everything in a video so you guys know and um, that is it I would highly recommend it. I love it and I don't think I'm going to change it and I don't regret it. So there we have it. That is it from me today. Uh, I'm going to go home and try and edit all this footage together. <laughs> and uh, don't forget, like, subscribe and share. And uh, leave us a comment on this video if you want to be entered into the draw. Let me check the date and I'll tell you it's going to be... On the 4th, I will announce the winner of this competition. Great uh, prize for anybody. Could be used <laughs> for everything. So, yeah. On the 4th, I will, uh, I will announce the winner and uh, be in contact with whoever's won. So that is it. I'm definitely done now. As always, a massive thanks for watching. And we'll see you very soon on the next one. Stay safe.
I'm very lucky.